Dear students, this presentation deals with an important prerequisite of research, namely literature review. This is one of the early tasks in doing research and it forms an important part of any research work. We are going to cover an introduction to literature review which will appear as a chapter in your dissertation or thesis. It deals with questions like what is literature review? how an ideal literature review should be. It further explores the need of conducting literature review which will also answer the question why should there be literature review or why it should be conducted. Here we are going to explore the need for gap analysis which is done in literature review. Our objectives are at the end of this module you will be able to explain what is literature review that is the concept of literature review and also elaborate on ideal literature review. You will be able to discuss the need of literature review. We are also going to discuss the need of gap analysis. What is literature review? Let us see what is literature review. Literature review is a comprehensive survey of the works published in a particular field of study. These can be paper based material or also network based material or internet the material that is available on internet. Secondly it is summary of a field of study and the research published earlier. So you summarized the research works related to your topic which are published earlier than when you start doing your own research. Thirdly, it always starts with literature search. First you start searching for the literature and then you start reviewing the literature. Now literature review helps to gain background knowledge of the research topic. Whatever research topic is there, we can ask the questions. These are 5W and H. 1H that is what, when, where, why, who and 1H is how. Now we have seen that literature review helps us in gaining the background knowledge or in gaining the knowledge base of our own area of research. Now when we do literature search we have to ask certain questions. These are called 5 W's and 1 H. So we ask the questions to the research topic that we have selected. For example, if it is knowledge management, you can ask what is knowledge management? 1 W, what? When and under what circumstances or when is knowledge management practiced? Where can it be practiced or who practices, who are the role players of the knowledge management, why it is practiced and last is one how, that is how it can be practiced. Now this can be asked as to how your earlier researchers have treated the topic asking the questions how the earlier researchers and what earlier researchers have done will give you again another exploration in your own research topic as to it will give you the direction for your research. So we have to ask these 5 W's and 1 H questions before we start doing the literature review. Now the next reason for conducting literature review why literature review is done and what is achieved with literature review. This is to identify the concepts relating to it. For example, if the topic is mobile cloud learning through blog mining, you will tap the concepts of M learning, that is mobile learning, cloud computing and blog mining. You will perhaps also identify the concepts of education 2.0 education 3.0. All these related concepts will first be identified and then the material on these topics will be searched. 
So literature review helps to identify the related concepts. Now next reason for conducting literature review is to formulate researchable hypothesis. Thus, if we take the example of mobile cloud learning through blog mining, you can decide whether through blog mining, mobile learning is facilitated, that you want to find out, or whether through cloud computing, mobile learning can be facilitated. Here, you can form two null hypotheses. First can be blog mining does not facilitate mobile learning. Second can be cloud computing does not facilitate mobile learning. In this way, it helps us to formulate a researchable hypothesis. Now the next reason for literature review to be conducted. This is to identify appropriate methodology for your research. You can decide whether to adopt quantitative technique for your research or method for your research or to follow qualitative method for your research and this idea is given by literature review itself. Our next reason for conducting literature review, this is to identify after I break, break, now the next reason for conducting literature review this is to decide the research design, whether the methods that you are using, then the tools that you are using and all the other people, whatever has been earlier done in research and then what are you going to do as far as research design is concerned. Another reason for conducting literature review is to identify documentary sources used by other researchers. You can see all the other researchers, what are they using and then take the references, prepare a bibliography or a list of references and then after identifying these documentary sources, you start with your literature review work. Let us see now how literature review helps to identify gaps in earlier research. After identifying the available literature on the selected area of the study, the researchers to think and search in the available studies and see which subtopic is not covered and would have been covered or could have been covered by the earlier researcher. Or which methodology has not been used at all, though being suitable, in spite of being suitable for that topic, this will definitely give clue to the researcher for see, selecting the focus and adopting the methods or even adopting the instruments. So decision about instruments for research method also can be done with literature review. Another very basic reason which comes out of all the other reasons is to lay good foundation of your research work because it helps you in research design, it helps you in formulation of our hypothesis which are the basic things in your own research work. Now what literature review should ideally do? As we have seen it helps us in laying good foundation for research work. It also supports the main area of understanding because you also search the topics as well as subtopics, related topics and your understanding gets strengthened. You can identify the knowledge gaps and then think on what you can do, what can be your own contribution. Third is you can modify or add to the conceptual framework which has been used by other researchers. Similarly, you can compare the results and conclusions of research done by different authors. This will give you an insight on what you can do and how unique your work can be. Now let us go into the need of 
gap analysis, why gap analysis is necessary. Now let us think how to conduct gap analysis. Initially, the researcher should examine the whole available literature on the topic. Secondly, he or she should synthesize and summarize all the material that is available or even select the material and synthesize it, convert it into abstracts for each one of the material. Third is, you can identify the research gaps as to the methodology or the instruments used, what should have been done and what is not done or the area which is untouched and you can take up that area and do, for example, in case of the topic like information seeking behavior of BA teachers, if you take the example, then the behavior part of it should be examined with different types of tools. So here survey method will not be useful and hence you have to use qualitative type of research. Similarly, you have to use observation as a method. So here you can decide your own instruments, your own methods in the sense whatever methods have not been adopted by earlier researchers. This is the gap in earlier research. Once this gap is identified, it will give you your own focus and then you can present your own agenda highlighting the gaps in the earlier literature and justifying the reason for the topic that you have selected for your research. Let us take one example. Now if role analysis and locus of control of BA teachers in Mumbai is the topic decided by you, then there may be ample studies done on role analysis of managers, bank officials, etc. This you have found after going through the available literature. But there may be no study on role analysis of BA teachers. So this is a result of gap analysis in your literature review. So you are looking into earlier role analysis studies. You will also look into earlier locus of control studies and then decide what is not done. So this is the gap. No role analysis on teach of teachers is done. If that is the case, then you are taking up this topic for research. There may be ample studies on locus of control, but there may not be any study trying to find out relationship between the role analysis and locus of control. And that's why your topic can be unique one. So literature review, will help you in this way through gap analysis. Now how gap analysis is conducted? What we do is we list all the relevant representative literature. That is we go through books, journal articles and thesis and prepare a list of books, list of journal articles and thesis. This is called working bibliography. Then we identify useful information in it, finding out the topics as well as subtopics treated by others. Then we try to survey the knowledge base. For example, if the topic is scholarly communication process, it can be IT or even in education technology. So you will take a survey of whatever has been contributed by other people. So this is knowledge base is assessed at this stage. Now here again, once knowledge base is assessed and clear, the researcher or you will gain more knowledge and that will focus, that will get focused in your own study. This is also very important. Besides giving you general focus, there also be, should be specific focus 
which will provide you a context and you can go further in your own investigation. Here, you will think which instruments of measuring the role are you using, are you going to use, which measuring instruments others have used, whether you want to use new instruments for role analysis, if yes, why, only because they have not used it or is there any valid reason for this. So this is specific focus which provides you a context. Next is the discussion of previous investigations. Here you have to start searching for literature in the libraries and also on, or on internet. Thus the literature review starts with literature search. Summary. To summarize, literature review is a comprehensive survey of published work related to your area of research. It is comprehensive plus critical summary of earlier research that is published research in your area of interest or choice and it always starts with literature search. Thus, literature review helps to gain background knowledge of the research topic, to identify the concepts relating to it, helps to formulate researchable hypothesis, it also helps to identify appropriate methodology for your research, it helps you to decide your own research design, it helps in identifying documentary sources used by other researchers. It helps in identifying gaps in earlier research, which is a gap analysis. And it helps you to lay a good foundation of research work. Thank you.